Welcome to the Aperio webinar with an update on the Karuda open source portfolio. I'm Janice Smith from Three Canoes LLC, and we're and I'm joined with by Jacques Reynaud from HEC Montreal. We represent the Karuda open source portfolio incubation project in Aperio, and we're happy to share our progress with you. In particular, we're going to highlight the features in Karuda 1.1, which was released at the end of May. Uh, we like to include our abstracts so you know that we're faithful to what we said we'd, we'd be talking about. And we're going to focus on helping you get to know Karuda, a friendly open source portfolio solution. We'll be showing you some use cases. We'll spend the majority of time on a live demo. And those of you who were at the recent conference in Baltimore will be showing some new things today. And we're going to encourage you to get involved in the Karuda community. So we'll talk about some benefits and features, how Karuda can be used for all portfolio types. We'll do some use cases and show you how to use Karuda in four slides, and then the demo and a short roadmap and some more information for your continuing use. So Karuda Open Source Portfolio is intended to be a next generation open source e-portfolio created in the spirit of the open source portfolio tools in Sakai. We believe that it offers dramatic flexibility for you to design your own portfolio process for your institution, whether that be a learning portfolio, an assessment portfolio, and a, a portfolio to gather data for reporting, or a showcase portfolio. We offer LTI integration for use within an LM LMS, and there's a migration path established from OSP. Karuda 1.1 is now available for production as well as for pilots. What are the key features of Karuda? It's highly customizable, no, re no coding required. It's IMS LTI 1 and 2 enabled. You can use Karuda in multiple languages. It has responsive design for use on mobile devices. We mentioned the OSP import. There are new dashboards for assessment and reporting convenience. It uses jQuery JavaScript on the front end with Twitter Bootstrap and Java MySQL or Oracle on the back end. Well, I mentioned that Karuda is part of an incubation project within the Aperio Foundation. Part of that is because we need to replace the OSP tools, which are no, no longer supported in Sakai 11 and that there are a number of partners within Aperio working on the Karuda Incubation Project. These include HEC Montreal, Kyoto University, IUT2 Grenoble, ePortfolium, and Three Canoes LLC. We began our project in March of 2014. We released Karuda 1.0 in September 2014, and we just released Karuda 1.1 that we'll be featuring today in May of 2015. Oops. So as I mentioned, Karuda can handle a number of portfolio types. So if you're working on a learning portfolio where you're focusing on individual development of academic or professional knowledge, skills, and identity, or if you're working on an assessment portfolio where you're focusing on programmatic or institutional improvement, or if you're working on a showcase portfolio where your students will be sharing attractive displays of their evidence, you can use Karuda to produce a portfolio for your institution. And we mention a number of types in the, in the right-hand part of this slide. You can also aim your portfolios at different levels, whether it's students, instructors, institutions, the point of Karuda is to establish workflows where all individuals involved in the portfolio process have a role and a purpose within the portfolio workflow. Now I'm going to turn the presentation over to Jacques, who will go through a number of use cases, a Karuda in four slides, and then a live demo of Karuda. Okay, thank you, Janice. Uh, do you hear me? Yes, I hear you. Okay, perfect. Uh, Josh is having small problems with uh, 
the audio. So I uh, hope he's going to get these things fixed. Okay, so hi everyone, I'm really glad to be here. I'm going to present a couple use cases uh, and uh, to give you a glimpse of what uh, Karuta can do. These are all templates that eventually can be used elsewhere. So, well, this one is maybe the, the rendering is not great, but it's uh, basically a, a school education portfolio where you have like, uh, you can see in the, the right and the left hand side, like competences uh, that they want to improve. They are components. And what they were asking to the, uh, to the, the students is to sort of field uh, to answer questions about the these components of these different competences at the beginning of the internship, at the end of the internship, or at the middle of the internship, I'm sorry, at, at the end. This is why you see like the red, the yellow, and the, the green. So uh, it's the scenario where a student says that, wow, I'm not so good at this component so far. He could, he could write comments. Then uh, he says that he's improved uh, at the middle of the internship with the, the, the yellow uh, result and eventually at the end of the internship he, he does really uh, fine. So this is really f reflective and it, it's, it, it was used very success successfully. And what we can do with these information, this is the great strength of Karuta, is that you can create dashboards. So tutor or people in charge of internships can, you know, have a glimpse of what's going on for the student and can check on, on the, the components or the different competences that are, are more difficult or where he's doing fine. So these, these dashboards are really, really interesting. Uh, this is another type of portfolio, which is more like in the spirit of uh, of uh, of OSP is where you you have like different rubrics like critical thinking, information literacy, problem solving. So everything on the left hand side is organized in terms of learning objectives, and then you say uh, you define critical thinking in here. You uh, ask student to provide uh, some evidence. Uh, you, they can download a paper, they can, or, or some kind of evidence. They can reflect on the evidence afterward, and not shown there is that there, there could be a part for, for, for tutors or instructors so they can evaluate or comment or whatever. So it's really flexible. Again, it's it's pretty much the workflow that is best uh, for you. Look carefully at this uh, at this page because we're going to come back to it. So the way it is organized, the way it is presented, this is something that we're going to uh, reuse. Okay. In Karuta, we have like special models where you can input. Uh, oh, that's, a, I'm, that's another example of, I'm sorry. That's another example for critical thinking, for example, where you have like many dimensions. Uh, uh, for those of you who are familiar with the AACU rubrics, you know that they are different dimension for each like learning, broad learning objective, so we can accommodate that uh, as well. Uh, this is an example. This is an example of uh, the dashboard that we can uh, generate. Uh, uh, so back to the ECU rubric, like critical thinking is like as many dimensions. And here, uh, we ask the student to self-assess to all these dimensions, and then uh, the the instructor would will provide an evaluation. So this dashboard can be created with Karuta without any uh, use of a developer. This is something that a teaching and learning specialist can can do. Af 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 of course, after a small training, but this is something that everyone can can master. Uh, another example of a dashboard where you can control for the colors. So if you want something that is more like visual and 
this is where I, I, I came back with the, the colors, like the red will be something that, that will be problematic. Red will be, I'm sorry, green will be something uh, okay. And so uh, again, it's an example of, of all the, the control you can have on, on this. This is an example again uh, on, uh, I'm not going to demo that because it's it's pretty much the, the same, but it, of course, Karuta is a IMS uh, LTI, so it can be used within Sakai. So this is a screen that uh, we be, we're, we're using uh, Karuta in a Sakai instance. So we can, you, you know, you can, students have access to all the, their portfolios, uh, instructor with all their portfolios with the different roles. So it goes very smoothly. So that's very helpful and uh, it, it, it works fine. This is an example of a showcase portfolio. So it's kind of special. It's, it's pretty much the same environment. It's, it's Karuta underneath. It's just that we sort of give to the students the, 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 the control that the designer has. As I will show you later, uh, Karuta is really flexible and for example, designer can do all sorts of things. And this is where we, uh, students can create these boxes. There are different types of boxes. There are like text boxes, there are like images, they are, and they can, the students can move them around and change colors and present uh, his work in a sort of very attractive, uh, very attractive way. There are many more, there are many portfolios of this type now and this websites are sort of pretty much created along these, these lines. Uh, another interesting use case, it's, it's, it's part of our, our French, uh, it's used in our, for our French partner, is that you can create forms in Karuta. And for example, for whatever reason you need, uh, you can create a sort of template so students can input information on a resume, for example. So they can put personal information, they can put professional experience. So you can create a, some, some kind of very interesting uh, resume, which will guide students better, I guess. And you can and then export this whole thing in Europass uh, format, with a, which is a standard used in Europe for, for resume. Or you can create nice PDF or nice RT Word document. So again, it's the flexibility that is really key and the, way, the, the fact that you have lots of tools to create all these pages so students can input information that is relevant to their, their page. Okay, this is, I'm sorry, this is a, a kind of heavy page because usually I present that in a, maybe I should, uh, uh, let me present. Uh, I'm going to be right there. Okay. I'm going to share my screen now so you'll see better because this kind of a, a bit uh, a bit clumsy. So I will move anyhow afterwards to the uh, the live demo. We see your screen, Jack. Okay, great. Um, okay. Okay, so back to this uh, is going to be much uh, clearer now. It's it's pretty much the uh, <clears throat> ACU uh, or uh, portfolio that I showed before. So it has like uh, a learning objective called critical thinking, and then you'll see within this page that you have like provide evidence, which is like a section of the page. You have like different resources, like students can upload evidence, and then you have like another sections called dimension and then all sorts of information within this section. So, and, and then on the left-hand side, you have like uh, a sort of menu where you have like learning outcomes, uh, critical thinking, uh, in inquiry and analysis. So, Karuta is really 
I mean, the, the key about Caruta is the way it is organized, because the way we organize information makes us, it makes that we are able to sort of retrieve it and sort of present it and, 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 and we, we have this flexibility. So uh, for us, a, a portfolio is like the tree that you see on the, that just appear on the left hand side, on the bottom left hand side. Like a tree is a, is a way to organize information. So it's, 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 a core, it's a sort of hierarchy. So the, the top, the blue one here, is uh, is what we call the root is the beginning it's the it contains everything and then we have like at this level we have what we call structure which are like big chapters which will contain other information the black uh, the black squares are the uh, what we call unit which are really important and the gray squares are what we call unit structure. They are like sections within these units or pages. And then you have like different resources. So if I, if I apply this way of thinking to the page you're seeing on the right hand side, uh, the AACU portfolio is what we call the root. Uh, learning outcome contains like all the learning outcome, like critical thinking and inquiry analysis. So it's a structure for us. Critical thinking is a unit, so a unit is really special because it, it is the, the page you're seeing on the, the right hand side. So it contains all the information within this page. So in this case, it will be everything that is relevant to this critical thinking uh, learning outcome. And everything will be underneath this, this unit. And then Provide evidence and dimension are what we call unit structure, like they are part of the, the, the different sections, the section of this unit. And then you have all these resources that are that are within the section or underneath critical thinking. So uh, again, this is the way we, we organize things. It, it, it is really useful because we, we can manipulate these uh, trees, we can do many, many operations, and this is what makes Karuta very flexible. Uh, I mean, this kind of approach is not used in, in, in other types of, uh, of software, maybe because, I mean, they don't need this kind of structure, but we'll see if we want to have flexibility, if we want to have the, uh, be able to reuse lots of information, this is a nice way to, to proceed. So again, uh, as I said, I mean, we can do operation on these trees. And for example, you can copy. It, it's really easy to copy, let's see, this part and dupl duplicate it somewhere else uh, underneath this or maybe underneath this other structure. Or we can copy things. We can link. Actually, we can put a link in this, let's see, this uh, structure that will, that will present the information underneath it. So that's what we call a proxy. And there's also the possibility to do read the values within a, a tree. So we have a special way to do that, which is called get resource. So we can copy, we can link, we can read stuff. So this is a, a very uh, important, these are very important uh, possibilities. Going back to these, uh, to the tree, uh, just to make sure that everyone is, uh, is up to for the, the vocabulary. So all these uh, squares are what we call nodes, okay? So we have the, the root node, the structure node, the unit node, the, everything is, 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 can be labeled nodes. And we can do all sorts of op operation on all these nodes. So there's a way in Karuta to, to put, for example, semantic tags. So we can say, uh, for example, uh, and it will come up in the presentation, this whole unit will have like, uh, will have a name, so we could retrieve it. We can also impose all sorts of actions and roles on all these uh, nodes. For example, we can give permission to students to, to write things or to other people to read, to delete, to comment. Uh, so there is a very almost microscopic, like, possibility to sort of for each small node everywhere in Karuta to put properties. 
So you can maybe show us a part of your portfolio to, to your tutor, but maybe not another part. So there are lots of flexibility built in on that. And the display is that there is also, since uh, we have all these nodes, there is a possibility to put properties on these nodes, change colors, change style to make things look differently. So there is like almost complete control on everything which is part of this uh, this this tree. Uh, last slide now is that uh, I really want to stress the fact that Karuta is built for like prototyping. I mean, I show you that uh, a demo in a couple of minutes where, I mean, the designer has lots of possibility. He can use templates that are already done, but he can design his own portfolio process. And the way we like to see things is that it, you can move on, you can present that to faculty, you can discuss, you can make changes, it's very easy. And then you can prototype uh, this thing with a couple of students and move on to uh, production and maybe make changes. So again, we really believe in this like iterative process because if you want to do a, a portfolio that is well accepted within your community, it's it has to sort of be well understood, uh, fit the needs, you, you have to take comments. It's not something that you want to impose, you want to let people share their thoughts and, and, and give their input on what's going on and what, what they can do. So I'm going to show you uh, uh, the, the, a couple of slides about the, the demo that I'm going to do in like uh, right now. So it's a very simple portfolio uh, that it's called video portfolio because we have like we have YouTube's YouTube screencast on, on this uh, on this thing if you want to look at it. Uh, and the way it's organized it's, it's, it has like uh, uh, two units called work one and work two. Uh, it's like assignment. Suppose that you have like one assignment and other assignment. Uh, and we see like assignment or work number one. The students will input uh, some evidence. The the pencil here is uh, the student has the edit on that and he can upload his work. And the second part is only is is the two is the instructor evaluation. So. Obviously, the students cannot change these these grade. Uh, this is the work two uh, screen, which is exactly the same. But of course, it can be specialized with giving instruction. What is a work two? What is assignment two? You can you can input other information, of course, and eventually, you can have this very simple da uh, dashboard where you want to put for all the assignment that are uh, that were like. Uh, submitted, you can uh, present here the uh, the evaluation by the tutor. They are sort of numbers associated with that, and the dashboard can create an average for that. Okay, so let me uh, show you the last slide before I'm going to do the uh, the uh, the demo. Is that in the in in the demo, I'm going to have like four different models for the portfolio because they have each of one, each one has a different role. And this is really important to understand. So it's it's like making things very clear, very organized. So of course there is the portfolio file or model. So this is where you design the portfolio process. Perfect. The, the next one, which in my demo I will call repo, is where you put information about, for example, rubrics, grading, criteria, any information that will be reused in all the portfolio for, for evaluation. Uh, so this is, uh, this is the repo part, the repo, por, repo model. And then there's what we call parts. Is this is where you put reusable elements? I show you what it is, but in Karuta, sometimes you you want to copy things that, that you want to reuse. Like for example, uh, a sort of uh, a page that is used often, and you want to be able to copy it in your process of designing the portfolio. So you put this information in parts, and eventually there will be the last one will be the report model, where 
this is a special uh, model where you can create, uh, I'll show you the, the, the different reports. Okay, so this is the login to uh, Karuta. Uh, if you want to create an account, you can go to ePortfolium.com slash Karuta. And there's a, underneath at the bottom, you'll see uh, you can create an account and you can, you will end up uh, where uh, in this, uh, this page. Okay, I hope uh, everyone sees that. I don't know if I can, I can make it a little bit bigger. bigger. Okay, so this is the welcome page of uh, Karuta. Of course, I have lots of uh, portfolio. I mean, not everyone will have that many. So this is a list of the different portfolio. On the left-hand side, if you create an account, you'll see that you can import, you can create portfolios here. Uh, you can uh, create a report model. You can create you, get, you can import portfolio and you can also import the documentation and some templates that are here. Okay, I'm going to go to the video portfolio that I showed you before. If you have any cash question, uh, feel free to uh, ask. Uh, so this is the video portfolio that I showed you before. I'm going to Okay, increase a little bit the, the size so you can you can see better. So, so this is uh, the page that I I showed you before, and I'm going to. This is a page for the designer. So first, I'm going to show you that uh, as in Karuta, you can change role uh, as a designer, so you can see how it's going to look for the students. So you'll see here uh, I put the role student. And I can uh, I can play the role of the student and and I can upload files uh, and and act as a student. Uh, same thing here for for work two. Okay and uh, okay if I, I want to if I change and I, I'm a tutor now or an instructor. By the way, you can create as many roles as you want and you can name them the way you want to name them. There's no, there's complete flexibility on roles. So you can have, in some instance, we had like four or five different types of person having different types of rights on the portfolio. So now I'm the tutor. And of course, now I have access to the, uh, to the, uh, uh, to the uh, grading criteria and I, I can, you know, I can, uh, I can change it and, uh, and, uh, and, and, and provide this information. And finally, there's the dashboard here. Uh, that the, the dashboard that sort of, uh, yeah, it, the, it's going to be interesting. I'm going to remove this. Uh, uh, just before the presentation, I was like uh, working here. And uh, I'm going to remove this one. Okay, I'm not the designer. Okay, well, we'll come back to that. I'm going to come back as a designer, I'm sorry. And uh, I'm going to remove the work, uh, uh, I'm sorry, this, uh, this work for. So as a designer, I can do whatever I want and I can uh, delete uh, this unit that is not uh, relevant and uh, recharge that and now have uh, a thing. And if I show the dashboard now, you'll see that uh, uh, I'm going to refresh that. Okay. And now the average is uh, is uh, is computed correctly because uh, we had like a, an incomplete average before because of that. Okay. So uh, now I'm going to do. Uh, I'm going to go to the. Uh, I told you I'm going to go to the uh, repo portfolio and uh, show you how we construct like uh, the grading criteria that I, I presented before. This is the first thing you uh, usually you do when you do a portfolio is that you, you sort of uh, create, uh, you, cr you sort of create the different uh, rubrics that are you're going to use. So as you see here, I have like uh, bad work, just, just uh, sufficient work. So these are all, were all inputted by me I'm going to delete this one that is not useful. Okay. Whoops. I was disconnected. 
these things happen, I'm going to reconnect quickly. I don't know if it's the uh, network at our school or it, it happens once in a while. So I'm going to get back to the video repo that I showed you before. Okay. Uh, by the way, I mean, I, I'm just going to, to to show you one, and we'll create one afterward. Okay. So this this is uh, this is like uh, what we call an item element, where you can put like the code here, like the zero bad work, and that's really important. You put grade as a semantic tag. Okay. So I'm I'm just going to show you the top here. But uh, you put the, the, the code, the label, and, uh, and the semantic tag grade. They all have the semantic tag grade. Okay. So, if, uh, so the way it proceeds, these are what we call elements. So if I want to add another word, another one, like uh, 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 another element on this page, what I do is... Uh, I'm going to create here, I'm going to add what we call an item. And of course, this is, I mean, this is the first time you see that. Of course, in Karuta, you can create all sorts of uh, information. So I can put, I can create structure unit. I can put all sorts of resources, but the resource I need to do the, uh, the, grade, the grading criteria is what we call an item. This is something that you can retrieve and uh, it, it, it's, a, it's a sort of list that uh, you, you, you can create. So I've created one item here, and I, I'm going to put six uh, because it's the top one. Uh, I'm going to put uh, the name, I'm with Fantastic Work. Fantastic Work, and, and I, I really want to put grade here. Uh, grade here because that's the way I'm going to be able to retrieve this information. So I'm going to save. I'm going to save here. So so this is the way you create, like, uh, if I wanted to create another type of uh, grading criteria, I could add uh, another unit uh, or another section and put elements with, with uh, a semantic tag that is really special to this one so I can retrieve it afterward. So we're going to go back now to, uh, to the, the main portfolio, which is... Uh, uh, the video portfolio that I created before. And I'm, I'm going to show you how to create uh, another section for your video portfolio. So uh, I'm here on this page and I want to create another assignment or what I call another work. So this is a unit. All these are units because you can see them all here. Like in the, you see underneath I don't know if you can see that better. Underneath uh, each uh, element here, you see the, the nature of the element. So it, here it's a unit. And uh, I'm going to add a unit here. Oops, I'm sorry. I'm going to add a unit here. So I have a new unit and I'm going to edit it uh, with you. So, uh, so the unit is going to be called work tree and we're going to put a semantic tag in this unit because we'll need the information about this uh, this unit when we'll do the dashboard so i'm going to make uh, call that a work uh, iphone unit like this is the semantic tag i'm going to give to this uh, to this uh, to this uh, to this uh, page okay perfect so now i'm, I'm here on work uh, unit 3 and I'm going to add like two pieces of information. One, which is the, uh, I'm going to say, okay, I'm going to permit the students to add a document. So I'm going to add uh, a document here. And uh, let's see, put a label on that. Upload uh, document. I don't know, upload evidence. 
I think we, we, uh, we asked before, but you can put some information there. And then I'm going to put, you can put a semantic tag if you want. Uh, we can put evidence, but we're not going to use it. So there's no need to put one for the moment, but you could actually. And actually this is a, it's a good practice to do that. And here on these metadata, I, I remember, I told you before that you, we have lots of flexibilities on what, who can see uh, this resource, this node, who, who can delete, who can edit, who can do all sorts of operations. So I'm going to get to let students be able to edit this information. So, uh, perfect. And so now uh, I have this part which is for the student and now I'm going to add, I'm going to add another uh, resource that is really specialized, but it's again, it's a simple portfolio and you see all the information you can get there. It's what we call a, a get resource. Okay, a get resource is a, is a special resource so you can go and, and read information elsewhere in other portfolios. So this is for, uh, this is the evaluation, uh, if you recall, this is the evaluation for, by the tutor. And we're going to give a semantic tag to that, which is really important, which is, uh, uh, tutor evaluation. Okay, I'm going to let the tutor be able to edit this resource, not the student. So, so tutor will edit this resource. And in the search box, I'm going to tell exactly where to get the information uh, that are, and this is the grading criteria. So, it's it's. Re I didn't show you before, but I named the uh, the, the the repo video uh, had a special name, so I can. You put here the the name of the the model where you're going to get the information. So it's a demo video repo, and then you you say, what is the semantic tag of the information you're looking for? You remember we put the semantic tag grade and you put label because this is the, you want to get the label of, of that. The label is like what we said, like good work, excellent and fantastic. Okay, so now if I click on, on here, I have access to all the information that, I, that, that we input or that you've seen before in the other portfolio. So I, I really want to stress the, the, power, of, the, the power of this, uh, the, this feature because you can set up easily all kinds of rubrics, uh, uh, questionnaire, anything that you want the students to fill or so it, it, you have complete flexibility, it could be like uh, courses to which this they subscribed it can be like answer to questions I mean anything that is a that you can sort of enter in this format you can retrieve it with a get resource so if I go back here and I change uh, the role for tutor you'll see that uh, everything works fine because my tutor now can be uh, can choose the information let me check just one thing here Okay, I'm going to come back as a designer. Okay, and uh, let me just uh, okay. Uh, I'm just going to refresh this because um, okay. Sometimes I've only three units now. Everything wor working fine. So. If I go to the dashboard now, you'll see that uh, there's a problem because I think I didn't input the information for the uh, this one. So I'm going to to choose uh, excellent work, for example, and uh, or maybe fantastic work. Let's see. And if I go to the dashboard, okay, it. Uh, it is going to, to work. I think I have a small thing because 
the, the average doesn't look right now, but uh, it's because I put six. I think there's something about the numbers that I think I I, I sort of I was too flexible in my uh, in my. Just make sure I want to refresh that just to make sure it works fine. Sometimes it's just a refresh. Yeah. Okay. I'm sorry. It's my co it's my fault. Uh, uh, we needed a refresh on this page, so uh, it it does calculate everything. So uh, let's recapitulate so far. We sort of went to the uh, repo uh, model. We put information about grading criteria. We put a semantic tag called grade. We we built a portfolio. Uh, we built a new page, a new unit, work three for this uh, portfolio. And we added, we make the students be able to upload a file and the uh, instructor or tutor to evaluate uh, the work by the students based on this grading kit criteria. The, the next thing I'm going to do now is to give you a small glimpse of how you could create a report. And I want to be, <laughs> I want you to be, uh, to have a look here and uh, before I start, I mean, the first column is like the different, it's the label of these units, which are work one, work two, work three. I'm going to put evaluation here to, I mean, it's just an example of what we can do, but uh, it's, it's, it's some text. Very good work. It's the label of the grading criteria. And these are numbers associated with the grading criteria. And here it's the average. So let's go now uh, here, and we're going to create a report a report uh, model, and we're going to name it uh, uh, a perio demo. So I can uh, uh, perio demo. I'm sorry. It's not spelled right. I know. Thanks, Janice. Okay. So I have this Aperio demo here. And it's, again, you'll, reports are created pretty much the same way as, uh, as uh, all the different other models that I presented to you. So we want to create uh, a table. So all you do is uh, you you say, "See, I'm going. I want to create a, a table." Okay. And within this table, we're going to search for for nodes uh, because you remember we were looking for units with, with name work one, work two, and work three. So I'm going to uh, for this. Uh, this table, I'm going to add uh, for each node. Okay. Uh, my click doesn't seem. Uh, okay, now it works. Sorry, it's it's uh, because of the uh, demo. I mean, the, I get the graphics make slow things down a little bit. So here. You'll see the power of uh, of, uh, of Karuta because you're going to specify if it's a root, a structure, a unit, a unit structure, or a context is for resource. So we're looking for unit, which uh, which have like semantic tag work unit. Okay, I'm sorry, work unit. So so the system is going to loop and is going to look at all each of any node called the work unit, which is a, a, a which is a, which is a, a unit. I'm sorry. Then I'm going to add a, a row. Uh, sorry. Okay. I'm going to add row. Okay. So for each, uh, and now I'm going to, the, the rows uh, are, uh, are the lines that you're seeing. And in each row, I'm going to add, add a cell. Actually, I'm, I'm going to add like four cell. 
you remember there were like five co four columns okay okay and add another one here another cell okay and now for each cell okay someone is uh I'm sorry, that's my phone, and I can't get to the screen to turn it off. Turn off my mic. Okay. So for each one, I'm going to add information here. I'm going to add a node resource. Okay. Which is uh, in this case, it's going to be like uh, a unit. I'm going to display the node label, and the semantic tag is great. Uh, is a work unit. So it's going to display the. It's going to display. I'm sorry. It's going to display the uh, the label work one, work two, work three. This is going to be the first column. In the next column, we want to add just text because you remember the next column was uh, only uh, evaluation. Okay. So here in my second cell, I'm going to put evaluation. Then uh, the next cell is when you want to have the result, okay? So I'm going to add a node resource because you want to be really, really specific on what's going to be uh, displayed. So now you're choosing context because it's going to, you want, you're looking for, uh, you know, the grading and the grading is a resource and all the resource have what we call a context. And you want to display uh, the node label, so uh, you know the wording like excellent, uh, fantastic, uh, good work, that kind of stuff, and you want to, you want, and the semantic tag associated to that. We remember it was tutor evaluation. Okay, uh, and finally the last one is uh, you want to add an, also an, an odd resource here, and in this in this. Context. In this case, you're going to add, you're going to choose the node type is context because it's a resource. You're going to to put the resource code because there's always a code associated to a resource. These are the number one, two, three, four, and it, again, it's it's associated with the resource which has a semantic tag tutor evaluation. Okay. So this is pretty much how the time is running so I think I'm going to and you can do an average pretty much the same way so this is the way we you can construct uh, a report you create a table rows and in the different rows because you loop on the rows you, you, you ask for this information so I'm going to come back and show you the portfolio that we had before uh, the video portfolio and show you the the dashboard and it's basically exactly what I showed you before like work one work two work three Th these are the label of the units evaluation this is a text that we put uh, very good work it's the label of the criteria uh, the grading criteria and four three six are the codes and then you can do an average so how do you do the, you do that is there is a special resource called uh, dashboard I don't know if you can see it so so you add a resource called dashboard this, this is a special resource in the dashboard you put the name of the dashboard report that I sort of constructed with you so in my case the dashboard was uh, I mean I done what before it's it was called demo video report so just putting the name of the dashboard here uh, you close and it's going to show and is going to go and get the, the the instruction that are in this uh, model report and it's going to use it to calculate all the uh, present or create the dashboard that you you're looking you're looking for i mean dashboard are really really powerful we're really pleased with this flexibility that you can you can you can for example your dashboard can include almost anything the different files the students have uploaded uh, the comments you've made to the different units or uh, rubrics. I mean, it is basically you have complete control on the dashboard. You can do 
whatever you want. And the good news is that you can export you can export your dashboard to uh, an Excel file, and uh, maybe if you have lots of numbers, you can do further calculation uh, within this dashboard. So I think we're going to s uh, stop it here. So may maybe maybe one last thing, Janice, and. Uh, I, I didn't present to you the, the part because we won't have time. Uh, we really want to have a question. So there's a way in Karuta to create a special menu. And in this menu, uh, you can sort of set, uh, you can sort of ask uh, Karuta to go and get a, a unit that you store in, let's see, the parts model and bring it in the, this portfolio. So. Instead of creating on the scratch all these work units, you can just click here and go and get something that is has been predefined. So this part I have defined in some other model, I've tagged that, and it, I can retrieve it. So it's really easy. Once you've done one unit, even if it's really complicated, you can create one unit, you can save it in parts, and then you can reuse it, copy it all the time to sort of up to to proceed much more faster in, 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 your, in building your portfolio. So all small things like that that have been done in, in terms of helping the designer to sort of be efficient in his work and sort of prepare, present the best, uh, the best portfolio uh, use case possible. So I'm going to stop here, uh, if you want to the control back. Okay. You need to to unshare your desktop. Okay, I did. Okay, so let's go back to the slides. Oops, and uh, I I I want to address the question of usability that came up on the chat. Um, let me say that we've spent a good amount of effort and time building out all the functionality of Karuta so that it handles all the types of portfolios that we can imagine. And we've spent some good, good effort improving the usability as well, um, but there's always room for improvement. And uh, the comment was that it's a little complex at this point. So uh, we welcome your suggestions for uh, making it simpler and uh, more self-explanatory for designers. One, one suggestion that came through Jacques was, uh, I'm not exactly sure how we would do this, but um, once roles have been established by an institution, having a way for a drop-down menu of roles to appear in the metadata screen so that uh, uh, an institution could pick its uh, established roles. Um, and perhaps add new ones, but pick them to um, provide who, information about who's going to do which action. Okay. So please indeed, this is a community project and we welcome your suggestions. We're setting up GitHub to allow for enhancements to be suggested through GitHub at this time. Uh, our roadmap is that we're projecting Karuta 1.2 for October of this year. We're going to continue deploying at, uh, in France and in Japan, but we're looking for new pilots in Canada and the USA. Um, we're, going to, we're looking for a partner to work on OSP export to Karuda. And two of the features we're planning to add, we've already made great progress. One is a uh, process for sharing portfolios via, via public URLs and enhancing the feedback or evaluation via email notification process. We expect to be out of incubation sometime in the, in the next few months, and we're looking toward building a Karuta community that will take its place within the Aperio portfolio community. To learn more about us, you can go to our, our newly created website, karutaproject.org. We also have a page on the aperio.org site. You can try Karuta by going to ePortfolium.com and establishing your own username and uh, 
try out Karuda in any way you would like and that you whatever you put there will be there for the duration. <coughs> it's possible to follow us on Google Plus or on Twitter. You can download our code by going to GitHub and we provided some contact names. Yeah. <laughs> Go ahead. Uh, Janice, Josh. maybe I, I would like to answer the uh, Josh uh, question about uh, how it's used. Yeah, I'm, I'm really uh, sympathetic, sympathetic to the notion that, yeah, for first time use, I mean, the, uh, the it's, it has a learning curve, of course, but everything in Karuta is done pretty much the same. So, I mean, the, you can improve your, your knowledge of the, the ways it works quite rapidly. You can lose as well template. But coming to the question that Josh uh, has asked, I mean, our so far our our scenario, I mean, how it has been used else, everywhere is that it's uh, the, the the portfolio is designed for by this by like uh, an instructional designer or some teaching and learning specialist. So it's not done by instructors, but. You can probably, I mean, we've done that with another school in France. You can create special templates for instructors where you, you, you design menus that are special for them so they can add things without having the, you know, the, bar, the, the, the to, to, to set tags and things like that that might be a little bit more complex for, for, for instructors that are not used to it. So there are, there are many ways to simplify the whole process. Uh, but but the first the first part I mean the the, the initial work uh, usually has to be done by some kind of uh, of, uh, of a designer, not a developer though. You don't need a developer. I mean you can all everything I've shown that you've seen uh, it, it can be done by someone that has no uh, uh, program uh, training. I mean it's only designer or TL people. Yeah, uh, there's another question. Of course, you can create units and, and share that as templates. There are ways to import. There are ways to copy them. So, yeah, this is the way you should proceed, is that you once you do, a, for example, a, a learning outcome, and it's kind of a fairly complex page. You have, like, interaction, students, pair evaluation, whatever. That. And you can uh, copy it, yeah, as parts exactly. And then uh, you you can streamline the whole design of your portfolio quite easily. Are Just there other, are there other questions? Go ahead, Jack. No, I was saying that uh, this tool has been made for. Uh, instruct designer by designer I mean we it took us a couple of years we were interacting with uh, teaching and learning designer and they were asking these features and it's a sort of joint work with the, we did with them so the, the goal is to really empower the the teaching and learning specialists so uh, so they can uh, so they can be really productive is there a, a database for this part yeah we can Actually, we're planning to have these templates be available eventually when we'll have like a couple nice ones uh, on on Karuta website, so people can go and get you know download a whole process, a whole portfolio process that has been used in some school, and so modify it and sort of move on from there and 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 change things. Yeah, this is it's really easy to share and and, and copy things. We have time for one more question before we've reached our end day end point. Well, hearing none, we want to thank everyone for attending today, and we appreciate your continuing interest in Karuta. Feel, please feel free to contact us if you have questions, and I definitely encourage you to go to our ePortfolium.com site and try Karuta as a user, as a designer and uh, take up other roles as well. So that being said, thank you for attending and have a great day. Yeah, thanks very much, everyone.